It's the Score North Twin Show. Hey, hey. We're gonna win twins. How are we doing? How are we doing on this Monday? Hey, Twins fans. Hey, Twins fans. Well, Judd, are you okay? Judd's more dejected than I am. I'm not dejected. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted by everybody. Okay, Rocco. No, no, no. Okay, Rocco. Well, this is our Monday State of the Twins edition of the Score North Twin Show, where I think we're going to spend the majority of it in the what is your least favorite thing about the, the Twins currently category. But let's start by shouting out Finch Home Solutions here, Judd. Tell the audience if they're if your baseball team is looking to distract itself with maybe some home improvements, some upgrades in terms yeah, of where should they yeah, turn? Yeah, yeah, you know what? You should call Finch because they're a heck of a lot better than the baseball team that we are about to talk about. Cody Finch and his team are outstanding. Any electrical Sorry. needs? Any electro? <laughs> any electrical needs in your home? Finch, look at that van right there. It's pulling up to your house. Finch Home Solutions. The most important word might be solutions because they're going to have any solution to an electrical problem that you might have, big or small. They are courteous. They're professional. They are quick. Sports Dad allowed them in his house. You guys know Sports Dad very rarely allows any visitors into his house. But when it comes to Finch, they are more then welcome because they have the solutions. And, of course, if you call them or or you contact them, tell them that the guys from Score North sent you. Finchhomesolutions.com. They have a great site, easy to navigate, book an appearance or, or a, an appointment, I should say. Finchhomesolutions.com. Make sure Cody and his team are the ones to fix any electrical needs you might have. Sorry, Dex. I called the wrong play there on That's the play okay. sheet, but it'll still work. It's it'll still, still work. For Finch, yeah, it surprised yeah, me it's too. It's my fault. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, I didn't think I heard Finch. So, and I've got my notes, but I didn't have it d- dug out. And so that's why I sort of just was like, okay. Go with the flow. No, you did a good job of adjusting on the fly. Go with the unlike, flow. Unlike uh, certain yeah, decision makers, potentially with the baseball team. Thank you. So here's the overview. State of the Twins Monday. Record 76 and 67. The Twins are now 6 and 14 over their last 20 baseball games. Third place in the American League Central. Still only five games out somehow because the Guardians have decided to not completely run away. 11th in runs scored per game. 17th in runs allowed per game. The Twins still have a 76% chance to make the playoffs, according to baseball reference. And a 2% chance to win the whole bleeping thing. <laughs> okay. And Rocco said this <laughs> after yesterday's sweep in Kansas City. That was an unprofessional series of baseball that we just played, and that's my only comment. I'm not commenting on anything else. I don't think anything else has to be said. So you guys, the media, can run with that and go for it. That's all I got. And he didn't take questions, which, you know, I, I mean... He takes a lot of questions twice, sometimes three times a day from media. Uh, And then he went into the clubhouse either before or after this and reportedly lit up the players inside. It was before. Before that. And I think you could, and I think according to the Strib story, it sounds like you could basically hear him from outside the clubhouse. Yeah. Well, they scored two runs in three days in Kansas City. That's impressive though. Rocco, Rocco is not exactly Mr. Raise my voice, turn o- over the spread table type of guy. So, yeah. So, ordinarily, the structure of this is we do uh, twins vibes are blank. We do your favorite current twins thing, and then we do your least favorite current twins thing. If you guys want, I'm okay, like literally just skipping to the least current uh, favorite twins thing and spending the entire episode there. Unless you guys have something in the other categories that you really want to hit on. I mean, I, I, have, I do have a vibe check. I, I okay. have to check on the vibes, if 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 you will here, because the vibes are pathetic. It's the word I wrote down. The vibes are pathetic. So now you've lost fourteen of twenty. The offense scored in one inning out of twenty-seven these last three games. They scored two runs. They came in one inning, and then they imploded on Saturday again in epic fashion. Which I, but yes, the players are playing. They need to execute. I don't know what the hell 
the decision makers are doing here, whether this is Rocco going rogue, whether this is predetermined decisions with coaching staff above him, but these decision makings to me are just, it's pathetic. You went from 17 games over 500 three weeks ago. You were 17 games over. Now you're nine. Now there's two teams that are only three and a half games back of you from the wild card. Though that, that bunch is now starting to creep up a little bit more. For a team that was struggling to take over this division and it was going to be tough to do so, they still put themselves in pretty prime position to either maybe take that back with four games still left against Cleveland or obviously just put themselves in a prime position to maybe clinch a playoff spot a little early-ish like they did last season where they can rest up and maybe get their guys healthy, which is another discussion in its own right. But the vibes right now are pathetic. I think they're worse than they were when they started 7-13 and to start the year. It was early at that point. This team went a four-month run where they look like one of the best teams in baseball. And right now, bookended in the middle of that is two pathetic stretches. I don't blame Rocco at all for going in there and finally lighting some asses. Yes, he's to blame too. We're going to do that. But it's pathetic. The vibes are absolutely pathetic right now. The vibes are hypocritical as hell. I do blame Baldelli. Dude, you just yelled at a team that you submarined their chance to win a game on Saturday. And quite frankly, in the last month, you've submarined about three games by yourself. Bailey Ober was at 83 pitches on Saturday. He could have pitched a complete game at the rate that he was going on. And instead, somebody, and I'm going to blame it on you until you defer it to Falvey, you decided not only to go to the bullpen, but you decided to switch up the formula that you had been using, which by the way, earlier in the season, if you had said, okay, we're going to flip Griffin, Jax, and Duran, I would have said, okay, but in, in, in a critical game, in a race against a opponent that you're on the road and you are beating because by the grace of God, Bailey Ober has turned into Cy freaking young. You decide to flip the relievers and then the team melts down. And now on Sunday, you're calling them unprofessional. If I'm in that clubhouse, I'm saying, dude, what are you talking about? You're to blame too. Like this is not the time I'm all for screaming and yelling, but this is a time when you've got to fall on the freaking sword. Baldelli now is is saying stuff like, well, it's set up perfectly for our pen. And Bailey, no, it didn't. You screwed up. And you don't, you know what? If you don't want to admit that to the press, that's fine. But to go in on Sunday with your team now struggling, there's times for kicking the ass and there's times for a pat on the back. And you kick them in the ass when you are as big a part of the problem as anybody. Give me a freaking break. I blame him. Yeah, I blame the team. But remember, they're without Buxton. They're without Correa, Joe Ryan. Like, they are missing some key parts. It is in the meat grinder portion of the season. And you have the audacity after blowing games yourself. You know, you've screwed over twice beyond belief. The San Diego one was bad. Machado, you know, last time I looked, Manny Machado hits home runs. He's really good at baseball. But he's got to come out. Over has to come out. Saturday was worse. 83 pitches. Nobody's hitting him. He's finally like shutting down this team. And you decide you're going to take him out. And then a day after that, you're going to basically point the finger and yell at your players. Dude, have a feel for your team. And just one last thing. I would like to report a missing shortstop. I would like to report a guy missing. Carlos Correa, where are you? What the hell is going on here? Can you either play through the pain or you can't? But I mean, last time I checked, you don't get a jersey giveaway. You don't get a bobblehead doll because you, you decide because because you decide what your your leg has to be perfect now. This is a bunch of garbage, and it really really upsets me that Baldelli's lack of accountability like it's gotten to me now. It's gotten to me. Oh. There are times to yell, and now? there are times not. You called well, for his head a year ago. I mean, I th- we. I, I know, but we then know I thought he was doing feel. a decent job. But but I mean, among the meltdowns, his meltdown is the most disturbing. It's like he's disgusted by his team. His third base coach is waving me home. Like <laughs> you are getting Tommy Watkins, and you had a third base coach before that, Tony Diaz, who the same thing. Get a good third base coach. Steve like Tommy Watkins, to do it too. Tommy Watkins is helping to, yeah, exactly. But Tommy Watkins, you know, and every time they ask him, he's like, well, Tommy and I talk a lot about this. And Tommy Watkins just keeps sending guys to their eventual <laughs> to, to demise their at home plate. Like, yeah. give me a freaking break. You're going to blame the players. I am so tired of this.
Well done. Well done. I'm, just, I'm sick of it. Nice job. Let's. So my my vibes check, I guess, was going to be the Twins' vibes are too dependent on chronically injured players. And but let's let's get back to that part. Let's drill down on the Saturday thing here. So for anyone that maybe wasn't glued to the seventh, eighth innings of a Twins Royals game, maybe you're watching college football or going about your life. The Twins are up two to nothing because I and I, the reason I want to drill down on this is because it feels like a microcosm of how the Twins lose games from time to time, where some of it's on the players for dude, just get 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 six outs, but also two nothing going into the eighth inning. Bailey Ober, who's been your best, most consistent starting pitcher this entire season, eighty three pitches, like Judd said. One hit allowed in the game, and he had faced only two batters over the minimum. So he was he was cruising as much as you can be cruising. And by the way, if you look at the start before that, so six innings, one hit allowed. Going into the eighth inning of that game on Saturday, Bailey Ober's last 13 innings over two starts, two hits allowed. Like he is untouchable right now as he's been probably in his career the last couple starts. And Rocco turns to Duran out of place in the eighth inning. And then Griffin Jacks. And so I think the comeback would be from the Twins. Well, we don't, you know, we're not going to push over too much. We're like, he's only gone over 100 pitches maybe three times all year. So we don't want to put him in. It's still a close game. We don't want to third time through the order. Like, we don't want to go too crazy here. And I would counter by saying Bailey Ober is better the third time through the order than he is the first time through the order statistically. First time through the order, and then by the way, his numbers the first time through are also pretty good. He does have a home run problem, and he gives up those first inning runs. But first time through the order, 208 batting average allowed. Third time through the order, it's better by 40 points, a 170 batting average allowed. On base percentage gets better by 15 points, third time through the order. And if you look at pitch count, so uh, pitches 76 through 100. Baseball reference takes 25 pitch chunks and gives numbers for each pitcher. Pitches 76 through 100. Bailey Ober allowing a 184 batting average against and a 260 on base percentage against. There is no evidence, unless there was something physically wrong with him that we didn't have information about, that wasn't reported or talked about. There is no evidence to suggest pulling your best pitcher with 83 pitches, giving up two hits over the past week and a half is sound strategy. And Duran is having his worst year as a major league baseball reliever. So like I I'm with, I'm with Judd on this one on the rant. Yes. The players need to get outs. Your two best relievers need to close out a two nothing game in a key spot. But why are you taking out your best starting pitcher who's lights out third time through the order after only 83 pitches in a game in which he's allowed one hit? I don't get it. Doesn't make Ed, sense to me. And Ed retired 15 guys in a row. It, was, it wasn't like the, we started some walks and some Royals started having uh, longer at-bats in the seventh. He had retired 15 consecutive hitters on a Royals team that you know doesn't have Vinny anymore, but right now is still a pretty good team. And Bailey Ober also, who has been beaten up by Kansas City. Ten starts. I mean, it has, it has literally ballooned his career ERA. The difference in starts, uh, get not including Kansas City, are humongous for him. He's in line for his first win against the team that has absolutely clobbered him. He deserves to get the eighth. He deserves to get the eighth there. And Griffin Jacks, oh, oh, well, we can you can bridge. You can bridge your six outs between two of your best relievers. Or... We can continue to pitch the guy who's cruising and only have to use maybe one of those relievers. Why do we have to use both of the relievers in the game? I, o Ober's been great, and for him also not to get that that eighth inning at the very least, and maybe hell, maybe he does get the ninth if that's another quick inning. It's it's just very confusing to me. The, the, the decision making has just been baffling. And one other quick thing, like what the, what they're doing, and, and oftentimes there is statistical evidence to suggest that trouble is on the horizon before maybe it manifests in front of your eyes, and you should make a preventative move pitching-wise. I, I get that there are definitely trends 
And there's a bunch of pitchers out there that as the third time through the order, heart of the order, especially lurks, you should be careful. Even though that pitcher's on cruise control, it's probably not going to last. Ober does not fall into that category. So trying to prevent something bad before it happens is over managing and overthinking in this particular situation. And to put it at its simplest, Judd, and then I'll shut up and throw it back to you. You've got a pitcher, a known commodity, who's very, very good, who is dealing right now. And then you've got two other guys, one in particular that's been very hot, very cold. And you don't know how that pitcher is going to perform or feel on this night. You know that you've been cruising with this one guy. Mm -hmm. Stick with the known commodity into the eighth inning. And I I would say if he starts to give up, all right, he starts to fall behind. Maybe he walks the first batter. All right, short leash gives up a ringing double off the fence or something. Okay, short leash. Let somebody come in and clean it up. But to not even give him a chance to go out there and continue cruise control is asking for the Royals. The Royals, if you flip it around and say, hey, Kansas City, what do you want to happen going into the eighth inning right now? Would you like to face Bailey Ober again? Or would you like to take your chances against somebody else? They would have voted, somebody else come in the game, please. We have no shot to score a run off Bailey Ober tonight. Yep. And Duran has not been the 2023 Duran, so they they would say, yeah, we would welcome that move. But let's go back to the hypocritical nature of this entire thing, okay? Two weeks ago, we were all told, no, Griffin Jacks, you guys don't get it. We can't put him back out there for a second inning of work against the Padres because he's throwing really well, but we have to guard him. Okay, so here's the problem. On Saturday, you went into a blind panic. Duran got hit. What did you immediately do? You flip to Jax. Who was going to pitch the ninth? Jax was. See, that if if I'm a player, I think all athletes want is consistency from the umpires, the referees, the manager, the front office, right? So if you're going to tell the media two weeks ago, okay, you guys don't get this. Griffin Jax is a one inning, comes in, the bases are empty, it's clean. He, he That's him. Okay, I don't really like that, but okay, it's got to be consistent. Saturday, you panicked. Duran got got hit. They couldn't get out of the dugout quick enough to put Jax in, which is, again, if what you were saying previously is true, blatantly unfair to Jax as well. Now, I would argue I would rather have Jax in, but that's not the point. The point is the hypocritical nature of what the Twins did, I think, from a managerial perspective over the weekend, and then to be the bad parent, right? Nothing worse than an inconsistent parent who gets pissed off when their inconsistency is exploited. And they're probably mad at themselves, but they still yell at the kids. This is where I have a major, major problem. If you're going to tell me something, it better be true, because if it's not, my respect for you has declined. And Duran's outings this year in non-save situations. Now, yeah, another good point. The 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 debate was him going into the eighth inning with a two-run lead. Could he have still picked up a save by yes. pitching the eighth oh, yeah. and ninth? Right. That, if, that he, if he closes out, save. yeah. If he yeah. closes, yeah. If he closes out. Last three innings. But in non-save and save situations, there is a dramatic difference here in Duran's numbers. Huge number. In non-save situations, Duran in 19 innings has an ERA of 6.98, ERA of near seven. There's some guys that are very good at the closing role that are just that are that have that gene. Duran in save situations this year, 28 innings, a, a sub two ERA. There's something different. So for them to also go reverse logic, I also just don't get. And this is now the third or fourth time they've made a bullpen decision that has submarined them. You will have an epic blow, a bullpen meltdown like Alcala against Texas three weeks ago. Those appearances are just unfortunately going to happen. But for whatever reason, it feels like the Twins have put themselves into bullpen meltdown situations that are self-inflicted, not just baseball being baseball. Mm. (sighs) (laughs) Okay. What is your least favorite current Twins thing? Can I start, actually? Can I give you guys one? Yes. 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 It's the fact that they have nearly 40% of their team payroll tied up in two chronically injured players, Carlos Correa and Byron Buxton. Those are probably your two most important position players. Royce Lewis is such a wild card because like, I get that his bat can carry you for games and weeks. So, you know, put Royce in that same sentence, but your 
high end all star caliber shortstop offense, defense, everything. And then Byron Buxton, even at age 30, is still one of the best defensive and all around great center fielders in the game. When he's healthy, he can hit, he can cover the entire pasture. And it's, you know, we sit here and we try to figure out, well, how are the twins going into such a slide? Well, the two most important positions on the diamond are shortstop and center field, not counting pitching. And the twins have two of the best players at those positions unavailable for a stretch run. Now, should that lead to, you know, what did I say? A four and a six and 14 record over 20 games. I mean, there's more going wrong than just injuries, but those guys combined tie up just under 40% of your current 2024 payroll. And Buxton's never available in September throughout his career. And Correa increasingly is not healthy and available with the chronic ankle and then the foot injury that's sort of connected to the ankle that he's nervous about. So I don't know what the solution is because if they can't play, they can't play. And if putting them out there at 40% is the answer, I'm not sure that that's going to help you turn this thing around either. It's just exasperating that your franchise hinges on two guys that cannot get on the field in the most important weeks of the entire season. And It'd be, it'd be one thing if the Twins were still kind of winning these games or like even playing 500 ball. Let's just let's just call it 500 baseball, not even not even going on a stretch, but just playing 500 ball and you were getting closer and closer to them clinching a playoff spot and having and having solid updates that, hey, maybe Buck or Correa are going to come back here. And as you're losing, as you're tail spinning, which dovetails into my least favorite thing, the rest of the offense is just, it's gone. Like they, they scored two runs over the weekend. Royce Lewis, love the guy, but he does do slumps. He's been pressing at the plate. It feels like everyone is obviously pressing a little bit here because they're gripping their bats. They're losing 14 to 20. And, I, you know, J- Ryan Jeffers' post-game comments yesterday of it kind of feels like, and he kind of encapsulated this in his quote, that it feels a lot more like the offense is approaching things like they did in the first 18 games where they're swinging hard, they're trying to hit home runs, they're not, you know, putting together great long at bats where they're taking seven to eight pitches and fouling things off and slapping a ball down the line instead of trying to go for a. It feels like they've they've pressed so hard here that they've gone away from what has actually mostly made them a pretty good offense this season. And now everyone from Royce Lewis to Jeffers, obviously to to Jose Miranda, Brooks Lee, like everyone is just pressing at the plate now. And now not even not even the bullpen meltdowns like. Get more runs than two runs if you're going to go in the eighth inning, for God's sakes. Don't just score two runs over 27. The offensive approach, too, has definitely been my least favorite thing also in this 20-game stretch. It definitely has, but, I mean, part of the problem, too, is the touch tone, the captain of this entire thing when they turned it around after the first 18 games was Correa. Like, he was the, like, it's a small thing, but it's important. Ryan Jeffers has become the spokesperson for this team, okay? Carlos Correa was like a captain type and God bless him. I'm not, I'm not denigrating Jeffers one bit, but when you think about like how this team is functioning now, which is again, why I don't think you ream them out. Um, also, I, I am more concerned than ever because the Kenny Rosenthal report on Fox during Saturday's game that he had talked to Carlos and he said, the last two days were great. I was running great, which has sort of been a re- reoccurring theme. Hey, it's going well, it's going well. But then I have no date for a rehab. Yeah. I am very, very concerned. I feel like we are um, being gaslit a bit here. Like, oh, I'll be back eventually. I'll be back eventually. And, okay, if he comes back right before the playoffs, I would want him back. I'm not saying that. But, I mean, this guy was on an all-star, was having an all-star season. Is he going to be the same player? Like, like I got a lot of questions here. And the Twins aren't exactly the most, most forthcoming franchise when it comes to this stuff. Like, I think there's a lot going on here that we don't know uh, and that will eventually c- come out. But that's not even my least favorite thing. My least favorite thing is the fact that, okay, Royce Lewis was four for 25 with, I believe, one extra base hit on the seven-game trip. Now, yes, he does slumps. Every Major League Baseball player does. To say you don't is ridiculous. That's fine. But let's, as Phil says, let's drill down here on this, Okay. I think we can all say safely, Royce Lewis is a very cocky player. And a lot of times, he should be. He can carry your team. That being said, 
And it starts with the second base thing, but I feel like it goes beyond that behind the scenes. Why are we messing with his head? I think Royce is a very... Um, I think he comes off as tough, but he's he's young. He's been through a lot. And I don't know that, that he is as mentally strong as he uh, pretends to be. Doesn't mean he won't be someday. But he's still a young kid. And it feels like the franchise is fighting him on things. Yeah. Why? What, 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 whatever the reason is that he doesn't feel comfortable playing second base, whether it's because it's kind of sounds like maybe the franchise looks at it as, dude, like from Rocco up to the front office, dude, guys play different positions, figure it out. Like it, it, it should not be for a, a professional athlete who plays infield and is athletic and talented, who started at shortstop early in his career. I think the organization says we need some flexibility here. You're, and I think Royce is saying, okay, well, a, I don't know if I agree with that, but B, even if I did, could we maybe get an off season or a spring training to right. work it out? So we're not doing it in the middle of a pennant race. And I can see both sides of the argument, but for, you know, wherever they're at with this thing, do they need to shove it down the organization's throat on September 9th? If a guy doesn't, he's not fully into it. He's not fully prepared. He's not fully mentally confident. So I, I tend to side with Royce on this. That hey, let's let, let's have this be an off season spring training transition. If now if he were to come in and say, oh hell yeah, let's do this. I'm in. It's going to be a little weird for a while. If he was bought in middle of the season, okay, do it. But because he's not, it should be a bigger conversation for the off season. And it's just like another thing that is lingering here and it's probably hindering his offensive performance over the last three weeks he also deserves you know every team will say everyone gets treated the same we like to treat everyone that's bs this guy is a potential superstar okay you're alienating alienating him actively at a time where you shouldn't be i'm not saying that there have to be kids gloves all the time but this is a guy who should be a cornerstone of your franchise for years to come. Like he's good, especially at the plate, good enough to be a cornerstone. And you're just, you're treating him like you would anyone else. And here's what really gets me. This is from the same manager and the same management that when Eddie Rosario would half-ass a ball and get thrown out at second, they would never bench him. I asked Paul Deli once. I'm like, don't you ever consider like you taking him out of the game? And they're, they're like, that's not how you send the message. That's not what you do. So if I see some schlep run to second base and get tossed because he loafed, you don't take him out. But you're telling me a potential franchise cornerstone needs to play second. And now you're going back and forth in the media with him. It's a, I just, I don't, here's what I don't get about him. I don't get how their brains work. I don't get what they're doing. I don't understand. Like, I understand numbers, analytics. Okay, all very useful tools. But these are human beings, some more talented than others. What are you doing? Why are you doing this to yourself? Whether it's Rocco or Gardy, Falvey, Terry Ryan, Bill Smith, it just feels like, and I've obviously only been in that locker room like from a, from a full-time access this season, but I've been in it before. Um, the Twins appreciate good soldiers. Oh, yeah. And when someone pushes back for right or wrong reasons, like the Josh Donaldson's and, you know, the Addison Reed's and, and Lance Lynn's like, all right, Kyle let's Loesch. calm down here, guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kyle Loesch taking a bat to someone's door. Like door. Th there's, th there's a difference there, but I think what you, what you can run into a, where you run into a problem here is you drafted a guy, number one overall, who is super over with your entire fan base and can carry you to, yes, he does slumps, but can carry you at the plate, gives you a difference maker at the plate. When he's at his 100%, that is very rare to have in the Major League Baseball. And for and you're, you're pushing back against him, which just seems, whether it's right or wrong, it just seems like an interesting battle to pick on for a guy that's supposed to be your heir apparent superstar. Yeah. Before we end the episode, I do want to force a favorite. And since we've gone through the two categories, your favorite current Twins thing here. Uh, but Dex, what what is your favorite thing about Element Hotel? 
just uh, steps away from the target field entrance. Yeah, I, I don't pick any battles with the Element Hotel. Okay, it's a great it's a great hotel for the ninth inning or first inning. Steps away from target field. It's got free Wi-Fi, pet friendly hotel too. You can bring your little friend. Uh, you got a great snack option there, which is always a big one for me when I stumble into a hotel. Oh, there's some hot Cheetos here. Absolutely, sign me up. Uh, you can go to scorenorth.com slash element, 15% off your booking. Scorenorth.com slash element. Shout out to the Element Hotel for sponsoring programming on Score North. Yeah. Also, a uh, shout out to Nicolay Law. Russell Nicolay, still supporting, supporting Minnesota sports, the Purple, the Twins, and supporting you if you or a loved one gets injured in an accident. You know that things can get complicated in that situation and stress and life can pile up where that's where Russell Nicolay fear the flannel comes on in with uh, a comforting presence. They know all the plays that uh, insurance companies have to run. They'll go the whole nine yards to make sure you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. So if you've been injured, get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers, get Nicolay, nicolaylaw.com or one eight five five Nicolay. Okay. Baseball. I'll start us off here. Favorite current Twins thing. They are still (laughs) likely to make the playoffs. They are likely to play a wild card round uh, series. And they, according to baseball reference, have a 75% chance to to win said series. And with Bailey Ober and Pablo Lopez as your game one, game two starters in some particular order, the Twins have a chance to, it's a short series. If it was a seven-game series against, you know, a, a, a top high-end team, but any team you're going to play has flaws, and anything can happen in a short series, especially when Bailey Ober is out there and you could potentially hold a team to to one run or nothing over seven or eight innings. So my favorite current Twins thing is, despite all of the negativity and despite the slide and all the frustrations, they could still do a little something in October. I'm not saying World Series, but they could still win a playoff series. They could still put an exciting jolt inside, uh, maybe not inside target field right away in the first round, but I'm just saying, like, they're going to play in the playoffs almost certainly, and we all have to see how that develops. Yeah. Uh, Favorite thing is the Angels are in town. Hopefully no one to get you you can't you can't get any more worse than the Angels coming to town, so get right against a bad team. For just just you're you're back at home. It was a horrible road trip. It was a really bad weekend. You got your asses chewed out. And even though you might have felt screwed a little bit by some other decisions that are above you as a baseball player, get to come home, get to sleep in your own bed for a week here. And then after this, four games in Cleveland. And it's crazier things have happened in a week. Even though the Guardians owned the tie owned the tiebreaker over the Twins, one week of bad baseball by the Guards, and then all of a sudden, if you take care of business against the Angels and Reds, might be a division at play this time next week in Cleveland. So, got time to kind of reset here. But yes, that time to reset is running out. I got nothing. I got nothing. There is one. I, I've got nothing positive. The the Angels. What about Coming the trail mix in the press view. box? You might I got nothing to say. I got nothing to say. You love the trail right mix now. in the press box. The trail mix in the press box is good. The only problem is it's addictive. It is, and there's like three different kinds. Yeah, yeah. and it's, there's uh there's the really sweet there, there's the sweet ones with uh and I really like oh, I'll just have a little handful addictive. of trail mix and, and five you know, cartons like later. The, you, know. you got a popcorn thing <laughs> filled with it. Yeah. So I actually don't but like it. It's bad for me. But uh, I have nothing I have nothing good to say about this team. I just want to know where this man is. Has anyone seen this man? Carlos Correa, where are you? Where? What kind of cleats are you going to be wearing? APB. By the way, dude, if I know there's like Nike contract stuff here, if Nike can't make him a passable cleat to get back on the baseball field, there has to be some sort of out where he can wear... Maybe he wears something else and puts tape over the logo and they... Are you still buying that, though, now? Like, I think that was an original thing. I think we're way deeper now. I think we're into the ankle problem. Yeah, I I mean... I think it's part of the the pie. I I mean, even, like, when when Josh Stamont, uh, he lost part of his cleat in in an appearance this year, and I had a long conversation with him about it, and I was like, well, can't you, like, just ask for time and ask for a new cleat? He's like, yeah, but then it makes my sponsor, which at the time was New Balance or someone, he was like, then it makes them look bad. 
I'm like, but you lost your Dude, cleat. Right. Doesn't, yeah. it, it, you, you look lost, bad. You your cleat your fell cleat. apart. And Bro. now you're gone. And now you lost your job. Yeah. We, we, we care more about the corporate sponsorship. And maybe yeah. contractually you have to because you're tied in. Yeah, yeah. You can't go outside without a Nike check mark on your body somewhere when they're giving you nine figures. But anyhow, hey, that's really? your State of the Twins Monday. Baseball. Where is he? Score North Twin Show. Someone tell me where this man went. <laughs> Trevor Plouffe Tuesday, tomorrow. This is still a fun show as we uh, pound trail mix and see what happens down the stretch. Three weeks until playoff baseball. Can the Twins limp their way into the wild card round? Pick it up, Royce. Come on.